if it wasn't for a place like this, uh, the Good Shepherd Children's Home, I, I, I have to be honest with you, I don't know where I would be. When a child comes in, you think, how can you love another child? But they just, I don't know, I guess it's when you, when it's what God wants you to do and you're where God wants you to be, it's amazing what He can do. And, do through. I'm just excited to be here and be a part of what he's doing. I was loved no matter what I did, and that was what I needed. Um, if I had not come to the home, there's no telling where I would be today. I would not have the family and um, life that I have now. To get to work with the kids and to hear the kids say, I love you, and to know that they get to hear that back and that the kids are actually happy and just have a good time it's you know we pray together and how that the lord meets our needs together i don't know if you could ever really truly measure the impact of the home within a thousand children when i come and i look at them i just think what can you be where are you going it's endless to know these kids is to love them the Good Shepherd's Children's Home was established over 45 years ago as a home to meet the needs of children. Children like us. Children like us. Children like us. The home began under the leadership of Brother Woodrow Medlock and shortly after was under the leadership of Fred and Martha Kimmel. Uncle Fred and Aunt Martha, as they were affectionately known, provided compassionate and visionary leadership for over 27 years. And for the last six years, the home has been under the directorship of Mike and Barbara Juno. Today, the Good Shepherd's Children's Home still reaches out to help families all across the United States. The home is continuing the Lord's work by providing the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of children. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1-1. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me, Philippians 4-13. 1 Corinthians 13-1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Good Shepherd Children's Home provides for the kids love and stability. Some of them, it's their first real chance and their opportunity for, for any kind of success. They're getting spiritual influence, which to me is so much more important than just having an opportunity to succeed or to, to have a chance in life. And children need safety, children need love, and they need to be taught. Taught what's right, not just taught. This home creates that environment. For those kids, if they didn't have it, they wouldn't have a chance. When they come here, they see that, you know, family is about loving one another and supporting one another and doing the things that can make each of us stronger and to become the best person that we can become. They like the structure. It's secure to them. A lot of times you can straighten up a child that's going bad if you get them in the right environment. Well, we have a schedule and so I know when to do my homework or when to study, and I know that I have to study. It helps me stay on my schoolwork, and I get better grades, and I don't get in as much trouble. A little boy named Corey, he's showing me his room, he's proud of his room, and I told him, I said, you know, I used to be in that room. And his eyes get about this big, you know. He's, uh, he's so excited about, uh, you know, you lived here too, and I want to see Corey grow up and be able to come back and do the same thing. In this children's home, we're reaching out, trying to reach out to children that don't have parents, don't have a home. Our home deals mostly with children that are from uh, broken homes or uh, there's problems in the home. They're not orphans. We're not an orphan's home. The Good Shepherd Children's Home is a 501c3 organization. This means we rely solely on contributions from businesses, churches, and people that care about the children. As a nonprofit organization, we do not receive any government funding. The home fully relies on the Lord to meet our needs through prayer and donations. I think my most exciting things would be see where the kids would pray and get definite answers. She said, okay, Lord, if I'm supposed to pray for my mom about this situation, then it is supposed to rain tonight. Well, in, and I know for a fact in our forecast, we had no rain. We were actually praying that it wouldn't rain because we had an activity we wanted to do and we woke up that morning and it was raining. One of the uh, college professors had cattle ranch towards Woodbury 
and every once in a while he'd call Fred and he'd say, Fred, how's the freezer looking? And Fred would say, well, just the other day I told the children we we're going to have to pray. All we got left are a couple of hamburgers. And the next thing he'd say, Fred, I just took some beef to the locker. There are four halves if you need them. But they were just stories. Just like that. Over and over. How the Lord provided. This is a window of opportunity for somebody that wants to serve. I would encourage others to just come out and visit the home, get to know the kids. We are supported by individuals and churches. So you can get your church involved or you yourself can get involved. And I encourage you to get your children involved too. It's really important to have your children know that um, not all families are the same. And I think it's really important for children to be able to reach out to other kids. I think the home's future is super bright, but the home is going to be dependent on how people get involved. It takes financial support to make the ministry work. I grew up here and I can tell you uh, that the home has and is continuing to make a difference. We don't have a charge because we'll never let a dollar keep us from helping a child. The hardest thing is, you know, getting people to see the importance of our children's home. To get to realize that they, there is a need. The home has touched thousands of lives, not just the children that grew up here, but in the community, I think it's absolutely vital. Seeing them smile. And to know that they're happy. And uh, you know, that they're loved and being taken care of. I am the fortunate one. We are, I mean, we had so much fun here. Yes, it was structured. And yes, when I went through my teenage years, I'm thinking, you know, I don't like it here. But as I've gotten older and I have children of my own, uh, I am who I am because of the home. And we had a blast. These were the happiest days of my life. Having fun and playing with other people again and make new friends and uh, sharing my testimony. We kind of all click and we all hang out together and it's like having friends over your house all the time.